What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be the third time filming this video for you guys because I tried it twice. We had technical difficulties all over the place. This is the third time I'm going to be filming this for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. But anyway, before we get to what I really want to talk about, we do have an area of interest that's in, off the east coast of the United States. Let's go ahead and pull that up right here. Here's the area of interest. We're going to talk about this briefly since I know a lot of peop uh, people in Storms United and a lot of people in my channel are going to get some rain from this. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. A broad trough of low pressure located a few hundred miles off the southeastern U.S. coast continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear marginally conducive for some additional development over the next couple of days before moving inland and by this weekend, we still have a 10% chance of formation in the next 48 hours and seven days. So that's just something to keep in mind. But this is going to be bringing a big rain threat for a lot of areas in the Carolinas, especially. I'm talking to my buddy Connor about it. Yeah, this looks like it could be a big uh, rain threat, uh, maybe a few inches of rain on the coastal Carolinas right there. So we're going to have to pay attention to it at least in that regard. But in the meantime, we have a bunch of other stuff that we want to go ahead and talk about today. Over the last week or so, we've seen some more forecasts for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, excuse me. And what we're seeing is the probability of a hyperactive hurricane season has increased quite a lot. And we can go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Here's the latest forecast that we have. Before we get into the latest ones, I want to go ahead and kind of talk about what they were before. TSR on May 30th released their forecast of 24 named storms, 12 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes. That was on May 30th. On July 5th, the T a TSR released their new one of 26 named storms, 13 hurricanes, and still 6 major hurricanes. So we're going to have to pay attention to that. Right here, I have this pulled up for you right here and right now. And this is just kind of to compare the average. So this is the, uh, so the in major hurricanes that we're seeing, six, the average in, for the 30-year norm is about 3.2. The 13 hurricanes we're going to be seeing this year, average is mo almost double the average, which is 7.2. And 14.4 uh, named storms is the average, 26 is what they're advocating. So we're pretty much almost doubling what we are seeing on average right here. And I've been saying this for years. Above average appears to be the new average right here. And another thing we need to pay attention to uh, to as well is the named storms from the last 10 years. Uh, we had 3.4 major hurricanes in, on average in the last 10 years. They're calling for six this year. We had 7.6 hurricanes on average in the last 10 years. We're having expecting 13. And this average includes... A bunch of other, a bunch of activity and a bunch of uh, quiet stuff. Remember, 2014 and 2015 were very quiet seasons. 2020 was a very active season. It counts all those seasons and takes that into consideration, right there. And it also takes into consideration last year, 2022, 2021. 2022 wasn't exactly as active as people thought it would be. But that was mainly because the Sahara dust lingered a lot longer than people anticipated. But anyway, tropical storms in the last 10 years, almost 17. We're expecting 26 this year, according to TSR. And another thing I'm paying attention to as well is the accumulated convective energy, which is, or ACE. That's essentially a measurement of how many storms are going to fire up and how long they are going to be and how strong they will be. That's, it's essentially a counter for how much uh, convective activity there is in the Atlantic. So that's what we have going on right here. And the 30-year norm is 122. This year, we're expecting 240 ace. And with Hurricane Barrel, we're up to about 36 already, which during the average around the month of June would, would initially be one, maybe two at best. So essentially... Best case scenario, we've 18x'd our ace this early in the season. Now, granted, the ace is going on average is going to steadily increase as we get into July and August and into September and all of that. But the fact that we had this early of a, a jump should tell you what's going to be happening. The accumulated convec uh, convective energy is also another metric I want to talk about briefly uh, as well for another thing. The trigger for what is considered a hyperactive hurricane season is 250 ace. 
According to this forecast, we are at almost that. We are at 240. We're 10 below that, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanted to make that perfectly clear as we get more data and as we get more information. This isn't the only thing that I'm taking a look at. Another a very highly uh, sought-after forecast is Colorado State University's. In June, on June 11th, theirs was 13, not 13, 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and five majors. As of now, they are advocating for 25 named storms. They are advocating for 12 hurricanes and six major hurricanes. So that we've been seeing an uptick in potential activity from both of these agencies right here. And the CSU forecast was released, and it was considering barrel. This took into account the activity from Hurricane Barrel as well. So I wanted to make that perfectly clear. So here's what we're also taking a look at. Here's some of the other metrics. Uh, no, Name storm days. Essentially, how uh, how many days in the, in the year we'll have tropical storms is 120. Average is 70. Hurricane days, the amount of days we'll have a hurricane going on, is they're advocating for 50. The average is 27. Major hurricane days, they're calling for 16. The average is 7.4. So we're essentially, the C CSU is also pretty much doubling their initial, uh, the the or the, excuse me, the average forecast from uh, from 30 years. Accumul the ACE is also going to be at 230. But they also broke down another interesting factor, which the amount of ACE that's going to be west of 60 degrees longitude is 140. Now, just for context, 100, uh, 60 degrees lo uh, uh, longitude. That's pretty much the main develop. That's pretty much the main development region, the western part of the main development region going west. And I believe that uh, I believe this is the 60 degree line right here. That's pretty much encompassing the entire Lesser Antilles, the entire Caribbean, the entire Central America, Gulf Coast, East Coast, right there. And the average is typically 73. They're calling for double that. So. What they're saying with that number right there is they're calling for more intense and more tropical systems, more tropical cyclones and more intense tropical cyclones pretty much having a big threat ab upon land. And this is what we have going on. This is a bit of an excerpt of their forecast I want to go ahead and read out. We anticipate an extremely active 2024 hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. That is something you do not want to hear from Colorado State University. Matter of fact, I don't think they even said this in 2020. Let's go ahead and show you the 2020 or, uh, 2020 forecast for July 2020. Here it is right here for Colorado State University. 20 named storms, 9 hurricanes, 4 majors right here. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull that up. That's a PDF right there. It's going to take a second. Actually, uh, yeah, that's what we have uh, right there go uh, going on. Yeah, they're maintaining their above average uh, hurricane forecast. So even in 2020 at this current point, they were not calling for this many named storms. They were not calling for this many hurricanes, and they were especially not calling for this many major hurricanes. So let's go ahead and read this excerpt out a little bit. And I want to go ahead and highlight two key sentences I want you to pay attention to. We have slightly increased our forecast and continue to call for an extremely active hurricane season in 2024. Sea surface temperatures average across the hurricane main development region of the tropical Atlantic and Caribbean remain near record warm levels. And we can go ahead and show you that right here. Here's the sea surface temperatures across much of the Caribbean, much of the Atlantic, all those areas right there that we need to focus on and pay attention to. What I'm paying attention to here is this contour 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degrees Fahrenheit for those of you living in the United States. I'm paying attention to this because I've noticed over the last couple of weeks, it's been greatly expanding. And yes, Barrel did cool it down a little bit on its approach to Texas, but that's not going to do anything because at that current point, it's what, early July still? This thing still has the rest of July, August, and then early September for this to really warm up and really st uh, allow for all these waters to get to that point. So this cool down did virtually nothing. At this current uh, and the grand scheme of things, and another thing I'm noticing too is there's a couple of contours. If you look very closely, if you're in the Big Bend region of Florida, of 32 degrees Celsius, that's north of Tampa and in the Big Bend right here. For those of you who do not know how hot 32 degrees Celsius of waters is, that's almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, granted, this is in very shallow waters, but if this trend continues the way I'm, th we think it will. 
we could definitely see pretty much the entire Gulf of Mexico, the entire Caribbean Sea, and much of the Atlantic Basin in 30 degrees Celsius waters. And we could see large portions of that of those in 32 degrees Celsius waters, which that only exacerbates the problem we have, where it just causes a bunch of, allows a bunch of, uh, for this thing to gain more fuel and just allows for the waters to warm up and give it the hurricanes more energy when they organize and they develop. Matter of fact, we're seeing a huge surge in sea surface temperatures, more so than what we were seeing before Hurricane Barrel. It was a steady increase. Then it leveled off due to land interaction, due to the fact that Barrel was in there and it was a Category 5 hurricane at one point. But now it's absolutely going bonkers and it's surging again. It's surging faster at this point than it was last year. Matter of fact, the difference now between now and what we were seeing at this point last year is 0.1 degrees. This thing can easily overtake that, uh, take 2023 sea surface temperature uh, average waters in the next few days. That's what's concerning me right there, especially when you see that bit of a leveling off for a, uh, for about a day or so. This thing can take advantage and overtake it. And this doesn't and this doesn't just take into account the Atlantic uh, Basin or the Gulf of Mexico or the main development region. This encapsulates the entire Atlantic Ocean. Almost all of the Atlantic Ocean is above average. There are a few spots of below average, but none of them are in the tropics with the exception of a little bit uh, from Barrel in the Gulf of Mexico. But look at how hot these waters are above average, like pretty much in the mid-Atlantic. That right here is why the El Nino did not do very much. That is why we got 20 named storms last year. That uh, huge bulge right there. Because what that did was it crushed the El Nino. The only thing it did was it the El Nino did, which is a good thing. Good thing looking back at it was it steered it away from the from land pretty much because what it did was it weakened the Bermuda high enough for systems like Lee, like Tammy, and a few other systems not to really impact outside of the Lesser Antilles. Another thing I'm paying attention to with that is ocean heat content. This is the OHC we have for you right here. It has leveled off a little bit, but I fully expect that to really bounce back. I fully expect this to really surge, and I fully expect to see a lot of areas of 175 plus OHC across the Caribbean Sea, and especially in the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico. And speaking of which, we're going to see a, lot, a huge surge of OHC in the western half in the next couple of months or so, because... We're still going to have plenty of warm water. The waters that are over there that were impacted by barrel, they're going to quickly recover. So that's what we're paying attention to right there at this current point. And it's a bit scary to, uh, to me because just based off the fact that we are seeing all this stuff happening. But let's go ahead and get back into what they're saying at this current point. We anticipate a cool the neutral Enso or La Nina during the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, resulting in reduced levels of tropical Atlantic vertical wind shear. Because what La Nina does is it weakens the trade winds and it weakens the wind shear with it. The forecast is, ab uh, is ab above normal confidence. So they're pretty damn confident that this is going to happen. We anticipate a well above average probability for major hurricanes Landfall, uh, to landfall along the United States continental coastline and the Caribbean. Let me read that again. Major hurricane landfalls, they anticipate a high, a well above probability of land, major hurricane landfalls in the continental U.S. coastline and in the Caribbean. That is something you do not want to hear if you are watching this closely. That is something you do not want to hear if you are on the coast and if you are just impacted by a barrel. That is absolutely something you do not want to hear. As with all hurricane se uh, cane seasons, coastal residents re uh, need to are to, uh, reminded that it only takes one hurricane to making landfall to be an active season. That's pretty much your standard stuff right afterward. But the fact that the that CSU is upping their forecast even after Hurricane Barrel just barreled through the Caribbean and barreled through the Gulf of Mexico, that's pretty telling if you ask me. And another thing I'm we need to pay attention to is not just a wind shear, not just the uh, the warm water, but we need to pay attention to the dry air because I've been keeping an eye on this for the last little while. I've been keeping an eye on all of this uh, pr pretty much since the start of hurricane season. Right now, what we're seeing is a pattern of Sahara air layer that is going to be suppressing tropical activity, at least in the western part of the main development region, over the course of the next few, uh, few couple of weeks or so. 
Right now, it's doing a decent job of holding off any tropical activity, any major tropical activity. But the big question now is how long is that going to last? And the reason I'm saying that is because I've been watching this for the last couple of weeks, and I've been watching it for the last, hell, since uh, all since June. There is not nearly as much Sahara dust in the Atlantic than there was last year, let alone two years ago. It was just riddled with Sahara dust in June and July. We're not seeing nearly as much, and now we're seeing a lot more moisture starting to uh, go through across a lot of these regions right here, even outside of the main development region as well, which is pretty interesting right there. Now, there is going to be more Sahara air that's going uh, to be moving through here in a little bit, but what I'm noticing too is just the eastern part of the main development region, there's not really, like the Sahara air layer is nowhere to uh, be gone. It's, there's no, it's nowhere to be found. Now, there is a lot of drier in the Eastern Caribbean and the Western Main Development region. That's what's going to suppress tropical activity for the next couple of weeks or so. I am still going to pay attention to that. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and show you the moisture forecast courtesy of the European model right here, just to kind of show you what, uh, what I'm worried about right here. Let's go ahead and pull that up right here and right there. As you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of Sahara dust right there, but not nearly as much as what we were seeing last year. And another reason I'm pulling this up too is to kind of show you uh, this feature right here off the coast of Bermuda. That is the Bermuda High. Typically around this year, time of year, we see the Azores High at its peak. Now we're seeing the resurgence of a Bermuda High pretty much in early to mid-July at this current point. That's another tone sector, and that's another factor as to how, uh, to how the steering currents work for hurricanes. And this is what Colorado State University is worried about when it comes to hurricanes impacting the Caribbean and the United States. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the main sea level pressure anomalies. This right here is well above average. The high pressure system over Bermuda is well above average at this current point. And there's also decently low, uh, below average um, pressures in the in the Atlant in the tropics. What that tells me is. There is going to be very strong steer, steering currents. In short term, there could be a little bit more bad weather. I'm not saying tropical systems are going to make landfall or they're going to develop or anything like that. That's likely not going to happen for the next couple of weeks or so. I know we have an area of interest that we're paying attention to, but we're not going to really see much in the deep tropics, at least until we get into mid to late July. But that's what we're paying attention to right there. And we just see this huge, powerful Bermuda high right there. And it does kind of start to die down a little bit. But regardless, you start to see that uh, that uh, another one of those f factors right there just starting to organize and develop and everything like that. And another thing with the Sahara dust, I want to pay attention to it. The Sahara air layer is not nearly as extensive as it was last year. It's on all metrics, it's uh, it's down, down, down. That's the amount of Sahara air there is. Yes, there is still a lot of it, but and if based off of what I'm seeing right now, this does not look like it's gonna. Uh, this looks like it's going to clear out pretty much by the end of July. It took till the second week of August last year to do it. Now, part of the reason for this is because there is like monsoon season in the Sahel this year, which is just south of the Sahara, has really started to ramp up in the last couple of weeks. And what that's doing is it's putting more moisture in the, in the main development region. And on another, and on coupled with that, I forgot to even mention this, we're starting to see the ITCZ flare up even more. And now it's north of the equator. And what that's going to do right there is it's going to allow for even more moisture to kind of uh, uh, persist and stay across much of the tropical Atlantic over there, at least in the main development region. There's not going to be much activity because the Sahara dust is doing a good job suppressing tropical activity in that part of the area right now. But what are we, But the, the reason I'm showing you these models is what are we going to see two weeks from now? What are we going to see hell a week, even a week ago? What are we going to see three weeks from now? It's just stuff that I'm paying very close attention to, and if you're in the tropics, this season's not even close to done yet, and I will definitely keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Remember, we are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by July 17th, which is my 21st birthday, so if you guys could hit that subscribe button, that would be very much appreciated. I've been doing this for three years. I want to keep doing this as long as I want. I can. But remember, the goal of this channel, as always, is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to come hang out with us at Storms United, you want to kind of talk tropics with us, be sure to join our Discord server. Link to that, ladies and gentlemen, is right over there. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.